All right, kids. Here, I want to make sure that we do this problem really well so you get the idea, and then we'll be able to meet a couple more of uh, Bob's gang, see if you remember any of their names or if you would admit to remembering. Um, I realized I, I, I want to kind of write this out because, again, I've just seen kids who are like, I don't understand what you did. So we made f of 2 equal 4, but we did that by writing. I, I really should have said by writing this function. And I kind of should describe that function as my new f of x. Okay, now some people are like, what, what do you mean you wrote this function? Graphically, graphically, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. It's a line. It's a line. But it's a line that has a discontinuity. And we fixed it. We fix the discontinuity at x equals 2 by making the value equal 4. I mean, literally, mathematically, by writing this is doing this. And again, it's not really a hard idea. Everybody's like, just fill in the hole. Right. But you fill in the hole by saying that at x equals 2, I want the value to be 4. Now, the book calls this thing that I wrote, are you ready? They call it an extended continuous function. That's kind of big talk for a function that has the fixed number, but technically it's an extended continuous function. Okay? You're looking at it saying, yeah, it looks like a piecewise function. Yeah. Okay. We added that, that limit to it. All right. Next up. <laughs> Anybody remember the name of the machine? Okay, normally the names have something to do with the function. And so this machine liked to... Digger. Digger's close, but it... <laughs> <laughs> it was scoop. Scoop. <laughs> We used to have a toy scoop, and you know, like push the light on the top of his head. And I think it was actually a girl. You know, they had to keep things like balanced, so it was a female uh, scooper. Now, how do we know if we can fix it? Well, we got to figure out what type of discontinuity it is. By the way, for this problem, for this problem, the location has already been given. Now, I don't know why. I just didn't find the pi symbol. It's pi over 2. But kind of notice a little different in this problem. Like, I don't need to find the location. I just need to classify it. Now, I'm going to appeal to a graphing method. It's kind of my way of saying there's really nothing you can do algebraically to seek in uh, to, you know, to know what's going on at pi over 2. But you should be able to graph it. And I probably should have asked you. But make sure you know how to graph secant. It's 1 over cosine. So we're going to graph 1 over cosine. It's a trig function. So we put the calculator in radians and we hit zoom trig. I'm kind of moving a little faster here. So you can look if you want or you can get it to work yourself. That's the secant graph. It's not a graph that you should have memorized. But it shouldn't be like the first time you've seen that, um, that behavior of that graph. So, what's going on at pi over 2? I know these pi things sometimes bug students, but it's nice to know that on a graph like this, that 2 pi is at the end. That means pi is in the middle, and that means pi over 2 is this vertical asymptote. So, I want you to notice that there's a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. Can we fix it? Can we fix a vertical asymptote? Okay. It's, it's like possessed or something. Oh, no. <laughs> that was my best, best splicing I could do with the uh, technology I had. So, no, it's not fixable. Now, listen, I want you to understand mathematically, you can't fix it. I know that was kind of funny, isn't it? You'll get to hear it again for another one. Mathematically, you can't fix it. And kids are sometimes like, why not, Miss Now? Why don't you just like connect the top of the graph with the bottom of the graph? 
You know, why don't you just like connect it? Okay. Uh, uh, uh. You can't fix it because why? Because the limit does not exist. Remember from Friday? If the limit does not exist, you can't fix it. Because listen, you're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to like find the limit and then fill in the limit. You can't fix it if the limit does not exist. Okay. So even Bob, even Scoop wasn't able to fix this. I know. They never showed that uh, episode where Bob was not able to fix the discontinuity. It wouldn't have fit with the theme that he sort of could fix everything. Ready for another one? I just realized that I was wrong. The, the previous uh, machine scoop, apparent, I believe that, that that was a male. It was a, a male. This one, though, I remember is a female. And again, the function of the machine was similar to the name. Anybody remember? Okay, for some reason, this machine liked to play in the mud. So she was called Muck. Muck. Let's see if we can fix it. Okay, because again, this is serious now. We have to be able to know if we can fix it before we move on. Now, for this particular problem, there's an implication that you would have to graph it because honestly, piecewise functions are always visual. Okay, so we're going to graph it. By the way, the graph might help with the fixing. That's actually a hint that it will. Now, could you use a calculator for this? Okay, you could. But since we're together, I can continue to help you, you guys, you girls, understand what you have learned in math. There are colleges, I know Penn State's one of them, where it's like there's no calculators used in math, especially if you're going to do math and science. It doesn't have to be a big panic. Kids have, one of Adam's friends wrote back and said that uh, he was very well prepared for math at Penn State. Um, so if you've gone through the courses here, you'll, and especially if you're going to focus on math and science, you'll be in a good spot. But x squared minus 2, x squared minus 2 is a parabola. Picture it. It's a parabola that's shifted down two. I'm sure you talked about it many times. We reviewed it this year. Okay, so we kind of have like a vertex that we're kind of focusing on here. Now I say focusing on because I should be plugging in some numbers to get a handle on exactly what's up with this parabola. So if I plug in zero, now I confirm that it definitely we have this starting point, okay, as part of my graph. If I plug in three, if I plug in three, you get nine minus two, so you get seven. So now I'm able to kind of see that there's a point on this graph, namely the point three, seven, that acts as my ending point. Okay, so without a calculator, which when push comes to shove, I would let you use a calculator this year, but we can, we can draw a part of a parabola. Now, technically, the spot I ended at, three, would be right now an open circle. So I want to be a little more exact. I'm going to open that up, okay, because I wasn't able to get to three. How about this guy right here, x plus four? Again, a, a piece, a line, a line that has a y-intercept of four, a line that has a slope of one. You know, you kind of picture a diagonal line. Now, that diagonal line is going to start at x equals 3, when y equals, or I should say, and y equals 7. Oh, like it's going to start where this one left off. Okay, so I can continue my slope of 1 until I end up drawing an actual diagonal ray greater than 3. Now, do you see what I'm doing here? Technically, that, that hole in the graph is not filled in, okay? But we've noticed that there's a hole in the graph because we graphed it carefully. So can we fix it? 
Okay, because again, there's there's a limit. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to find the limit. Now, if you're saying, I think I already know what the limit is, you should. But I just want to get technical here with the things we're doing, especially that you realize, okay, we're not finding just any limit. We're finding the limit as X approaches three. Okay, that's the place where the discontinuity exists. So we're going to find that limit. And again, we did such a nice job graphing it that it should be easy to say equals 7. Forgive me, because I did kind of skip this part. We said it verbally, but there's definitely a point discontinuity at x equals 3. So we find the limit, and then we do the fixing. Now, when you do the fixing, it's really a matter of just writing. It's a matter of writing. I know it's kind of weird. People are like, is that all I do? Yeah, you actually write the function. I'll say again. Okay, so I write the function. Yes, I'm kind of recopying what was given to me. But technically, my, my, it, the book calls it an extended continuous function. Technically, my extended continuous function contains all the stuff it started with, but we're just going to add one thing. We're going to add that value, that limit. We're going to say that at x equals 7, <laughs> sorry, at x equals 3, my value needs to equal 7. Okay? Now I want to kind of level with you here. And I hope that, that you sort of don't complain about it. And that is that this is how I want you to do these problems. There's not many times this year I'm like, this is how I want you to do it. Um, but this is why. Because the book kind of doesn't help you think about limits. And they do this. Although mathematically it's right, it doesn't make students think about limits. So you ready? They do this. They just put an equal sign under here. Okay, geez, if you don't make it dark enough, you might not even see it but they put an equal sign. Okay, technically that fixes the hole in the graph, but I'm trying to make students think about limits. So I am going to say, make sure that you do it this way. Even when you look in the solution manual, even when you look in the solution manual, you're gonna see that they do something weird with this problem. They basically just write this down. They just write this down. I want you to do limits, okay? So when you do these fixer problems, find the limit, write the limit, as, as part of your answer. Okay. It's not going to fit on the video. I got to come over here. So, well, first of all, how about the important part? Do you remember the name of the machine? If you were a cement mixer, what would happen to you as you kept spinning, or at least your little drum kept spinning around and around all day? Yeah. So I'm dizzy. Dizzy was pretty cool, though, because she, another female tool here, has like this little drum. You know, I mean, you can barely fit like a gallon, a gallon, but was able to mix up enough cement to, you know, cover an entire road or whatever, driveway. So Dizzy kind of had like the bottomless cement drum, the cement mixer. I don't watch Bob Builder anymore, but. Some stuff just sort of gets stuck in your brain probably forever. All right. Now, we already know where the problem is. Just It's still worth thinking, though, that that's because negative 2 makes the denominator equal 0. Now, that actually 
that actually would require a little extra thinking here. Okay, because if you think about the denominator, it's actually a negative two and a positive two. But I'm basically being nice to you here and saying, let's just focus on negative two. Okay, so negative two makes the denominator equal zero. You kind of didn't need to think about that, though. You just needed to observe that it was given to you. Now, what you do need to do is think about how to factor a cubic. And it really would depend, but most likely you haven't factored a cubic in years. Okay, unless that's kind of stuff you do like for fun when you get home. To factor a sum of cubes is something way back in like an algebra class on probably a certain couple days of discussion. So I'm, gonna, I'm doing this problem to remind you of that. Okay. First off, you find the cube root. You basically find where the cubes came from. X cubed came from X and 8 came from 2 cubed. And then over in this parenthesis, there's like a little pattern. And sometimes this triggers in students' brains when I show you this. You square, you square both of those original values. So X gets squared, 2 gets squared. So I square them. And then we need a number in the middle. Anybody remember? It's the product of these. It's the product. For this problem, it comes out to be 2X. Now, there are some teachers that teach the SOAP pattern. SOAP, does that again ring any bells? All right, so we have to use some SOAP. This sign is going to be the same, S for same, O for opposite, and then AP for always positive. It's a little SOAP pattern. Now listen, this is kind of one of those strange points in a lesson where like I'm going over a problem that is very specific. I mean, you have to be able to factor a cubic and you're going to see it in your assignment. Okay, so factoring a cubic is trying to remember this SOAP pattern. I guess it turns out that we should factor the denominator also, like actually write it down. So we factor the denominator. Now remember, we're just trying to figure out if we can fix it. We're just trying to figure out if there is point discontinuity. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. Okay, the limit exists. There's point discontinuity. Let's go fix it. Basically, let's find the limit one more time here. I'll just kind of pause and say this is not a bad part of the lesson for you to think about this on your own. So we've gone through three or four problems, you know, to think about even what you're going to write down here. And then maybe even to do the fixing. I'll just be a step behind you. Okay, this is important. You know, if you still didn't know that the x value is negative 2, I don't want you to give up. But the x value is negative 2. That's the place where we have the problem. Take your function and continue to simplify it, continue to adjust it. I just went ahead and crossed off the problem. What you want to realize is that whenever you cross that off, you have created a function that you can plug negative 2 into. You can plug in negative 2. I'm not saying that this is easy, but you've, we've kind of been using this strategy that is substituting after canceling. So we substitute, do a little math, be careful. I think I'm seeing 4 plus 4 plus 4. 4 plus 4, so we end up with 12 divided by negative 4. We end up with negative 3. Okay, that's your limit. Use it. Use it to do some fixing. Just give you a chance to think about what you're going to write down if you want to try it on your own.
Now, you know, I when I grade these things, I'm looking that you say the right thing. I'm looking that you say x not equal to negative two. Because what that's saying is that this function is fine. This function is fine everywhere except negative two. It's just at negative two, I need a fixer. I need a limit. I need a value of negative three. I'm just saying, I've seen students when they do these problems on their own, kind of take these numbers and mix them up. Like that, that's not necessarily right. You want to get them in the right place. Some are X values, some are Y values. All right. What time? All right. I'm going to skip this last one, but I'll still show you the machine. This machine <laughs> happened to be scared of heights. So every time the crane went up really high, uh, I forget if it was male or female, but we get very sort of scared and anxious. So he or she was scared of heights. Name Lofty. Lofty. Now, I forgot we had the. <laughs> That was the best no that I could find um, at the time. <laughs> okay, there's a jump on this one. There's a jump. Uh, you would have seen this graph in, a, in an old assignment. Now, I want you to... Uh, I want you to start this. I want you to at least have the code, um, meaning you're probably going to log into it. Now... I, I don't want you to feel like you have to rush, but I want you to get the code. I guess you kind of have to decide if you're just writing it down or if you actually want to log in and sort of check it out. I mean, you have about seven or eight minutes. It's just a little exit question. It's actually not what we just did. It's a little more of an exit question. It takes you back a couple days. It says computer is recommended just because the screen students like it to be big. But you're actually going to be drawing something. You're going to be drawing. And if you like your phone, then you can like draw with your finger, which that's kind of nice too. All right. Look at it. I, I hope you're logging into it. You might even choose to finish it. But you're trying to make a drawing that has those limit statements. <laughs> 